Well, good morning. I'm George Latimer, Worcester County Executive, uh, and we're here today to uh, talk about the launch of, a, of an effort through our Department of Community Mental Health, uh, uh, ably assisted by our Department of Information Technology in this important area of identifying and providing more easily mental health services for those people in need. Uh, I'm joined uh, by our Deputy County Executive, Ken Jenkins, by our uh, Commissioner of um, Information Technology, Marguerite Byrne, by the Deputy Commissioner of the Department of Community Mental Health, Joe Glazer, and also with uh, Charlotte Ostman, who is the CEO of the Mental Health Association of Westchester County. And uh, each of them are going to do the heavy lifting here. We are in an area of public policy and in an area of delivery of service in that public policy that involves technology and those who are professional in delivering mental health services. So I want to defer to the professionals here to explain this program. Just very simply, uh, before I was county executive over three years ago, uh, the Department of Community Mental Health requested that they take what was then information that was provided in, uh, in paper and in PDF format and try to create an electronic searchable directory of service providers and locations so that people could more easily access this. People in need not knowing how to reach the people who can provide the service that would help them accomplish this task. So uh, I credit uh, the prior administration of Rob Astorino for beginning the process and then now during our tenure here to try to bring it to fruition. And with that, I'm going to ask uh, Joe Glazer, who is our, uh, as I said, Deputy Commissioner of DCMH, uh, to start the ball rolling and to be followed by Marguerite Byrne. And I gather we're going to walk through what the, uh, what the site looks like. Joe? Kenny Executive Latimer, thank you so much. Just a couple of quick notes that I wanted to start with first and foremost. Uh, I want to thank the County Executive and his staff for creating such a collaborative and creative atmosphere that we can put something like this together working with our colleague departments. It means a great deal to us to be able to reach out uh, to the other departments in the county and know that we have ready and willing partners to work with us on any day on anything that we, we're trying to accomplish and it means a great deal to the department. Um, this was a joint effort between us and the Westchester County Department of Information and Technology. Um, Marguerite did a wonderful job of, of helping us lead this effort. It started before uh, some of us got here. But for those of you who aren't aware, we used to have a publication, a directory that was about this thick and it was spiral bound and it took forever to produce, forever to print, forever to get into the community and within weeks somebody's address would change, somebody's phone number would change and that would be obsolete. So with that in mind, the decision really was that we would move forward and trying to bring this into the 21st century, create the technology necessary so that we could help individuals using very simple modern technology to access a directory of all of the services throughout the county. And great credit goes to Marguerite and she'll talk a little bit more about this because one of the things that you'll see as we go through this shortly, you will see that we've overlaid all of these services with a map of the Beeline bus system. So not only can you identify the service provider you want to connect with, not only can, in the case of Charlotte from the MHA of Westchester, not only can their care managers and their staff connect you with the other services you need, but you can find the way to get to the programs that you need to get yourself to. Very cost effectively, I might add. Um, a lot of what was done here was done under the direction of Commissioner Michael Orth, who is the Commissioner of, of the Department of Community Mental Health. Uh, Michael's actually in Albany today doing a workshop, uh, running a workshop for the State Conference of Local Mental Hygiene Directors. So for those of you expecting Batman, I apologize, you got Robin. <laughs> um, but what we have is we have a full list of services and we'll go through it shortly. I will do a demonstration at the end. But we have a full list of the services for mental health, substance use, intellectual and developmental disabilities. We have information on how to identify and locate crisis services, the entire array of services that are available through the county. We've been able to put it together in such a fashion that it works on your computer and I give great ca credit to information technology for making this work, but it, it works on your phone, it'll work on a tablet, whatever your device is, you can utilize this link, and it's a very simple link, as you can see, it is um, DCMH services, 
where's the, I'm sorry, it's DCMH services. And if you search that in any search engine, it'll come up. So we think it's wonderful because of the fact that it's not only good for the people who utilize the services, but it's also very useful for the people who assist them in getting to those services. Uh, a couple of fo folks from our staff that I in particular want to, want to thank, uh, Annette Peters-Rivolo, who's not only as going to do the essential role of running the demonstration for us shortly, but she's been one of the people who has spearheaded the effort for our, our office, and I want to thank her for her work on this. Now I'm going to turn it over to Marguerite, who's going to talk to you a little bit more about the technical side and how we got to where we are. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, just briefly, uh, these are the types of projects the Department of Information Technology enjoys doing. This fulfills our mission, which is to help county departments effectively bring its services to the public. And this is a fine example of doing that. The Health and Human Services team, led by Nancy Birnbaum and represented today by Kevin Kazakowski, and our GIS team work collaboratively with DCMH. We took that spiral-bound book of providers, we geocoded them, we put them on the, our GIS map, and then we added the different layers. And as mentioned, one of the most prominent one is any of the B-line buses. We can tell you how to get there within a certain geography geographical distance. If you're on your phone, you can say, I'm looking for this type of provider within five miles of where I am, near me, type of technology. And I just, we're very happy to provide these types of services to the public. That is part of our mission. It was collaborative, and these are the types of projects we enjoy doing for the county. That's it. Thank you. Next, I'm going to ask uh, Charlotte to uh, speak to us from the standpoint of uh, the not-for-profit world and the services that we're referring people to and, and how this process may be helpful in their mission. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Latimer, and thanks for inviting me here today. Um, for us, we're, we're very excited about having this as a resource. One of the biggest barriers for people to accessing help is not knowing where to begin or how to begin. And this gives a fast, easy resource for people to find something close to them and to access um, information about transportation. We've all become accustomed to using our electronic devices to order food, to order transportation, to get hotel rooms, to shop for houses. Now we can get mental health services at our fingertips, and that's going to be very important um, for the people that we serve. It's also going to be equally important for our staff who are facilitating um, people getting to help and getting to resources. Um, as Mr. Glazer said, uh, our care managers will easily out in the field be able to help people access a whole array of services um, in the field, in their homes, at their place of business. And so this really just couldn't be a, a better resource for us, and we're really excited about sharing it. Just before we do the demonstration, I just want to add, you know, sort of the general uh, caption of public policy. Um, when we have a press conference on an issue or a topic, it, they all come back to a single basic theme. What is the role of government and what should government be doing? And uh, there's a school of thought out there that says government should do nothing but the absolute minimum. And uh, that school of thought has had prominence at various times and various levels of government where you strip down services and you strip down spending. And there is a test of what you can afford to do. So you can't do everything you might want to do or you might think is necessary. But when you look at an initiative like this, what you have to go back to is what happens to an individual in a family where there is a, a, a circumstance of mental illness. How devastating is it for the parents uh, having a child who suffers from a mental illness circumstance? How difficult is it, is it in a family when it's your brother, when it's your sister, when it's your parent? And, and, and how alone do you feel? How much on an island do you feel as an individual when you look for external help? And the, and the help is out there, but you don't know how to access it. You don't know if it's right for you. We have enough trouble going to a store to find an article of clothing that fits us. And you can go from store to store to store to find out what looks right for you and what, and what works. Imagine how difficult it is to track the right kind of service. And so what government is doing in this case is what I believe is a core responsibility of government. It may not be police, fire, sanitation, things that we obviously see every day, 
but we have we have a department for community mental health and we we have it staffed by very professional people and we have a um, a department of information technology that's staffed by professional people i had do not personally have the talent to work in either of those two departments but the marriage of those two skill sets makes something available and easy for the person who's affected by this, by the family that's, expect, that's affected by this. And I will defend that role of government every single day, that that is what our responsibilities are. So let's take a look at how the system works. I don't know, Joe, will you Thank do you. that for us? Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so what I'm going to do, and for some of you this is going to look like a really bad ventriloquism act. Um, Annette is kind of going to walk us through it, and to the degree that I can see the screen. And, 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 Go ahead, Joe. Okay. So, this is the home screen. When you type into the search engine, this is initially what you find. If you look down the slide, don't go too far. If you look down the slide, you can see that it lists everything from crisis, outpatient, I'm sorry, that's inpatient. Okay, inpatient, chemical dependency. I mean, <coughs> virtually every service that currently exists that we're aware of in the county can be found in this directory. So, you can search by agency name, program. Why don't we type in MHA? Just to, just to give Charlotte a shout out. Okay. I was gonna do that on the map. Okay. okay um, we can do it often, I'm good with that. <laughs> so you type in MHA and you're looking for services from the Mental Health Association. You will get a listing of where they provide their services, what services they provide, their hours. If you'll stop right there for one second, and this is just by way of example, I haven't picked anything in particular. But if you, if you look, it's address, contact phone number, hours, evening hours, if they're available, age of the people they serve. It literally runs down the entire list of services that you may able, be able to get from them. The other thing that is on here someplace, and there's a bunch with MHA, is that if they have an active website, you can click on the link and go directly to their website. Mm -hmm. So, if you take a look at service type, you've got mental health, you've got intellectual and developmental disabilities, chemical dependency, you also have chemical dependency residences. So what, what you're seeing is that you will see when you look into residences for chemical dependency, you will see that there's a total of 27 in the county. And you can go through and identify the ones nearest to you and the ones that um, may best suit your needs or uh, from the perspective of a care manager, the one that best fits into your care plan. Now, the other thing you can do is you can search for services by area, if, if you're transportation limited, if you're looking to spend um, your time getting treatment in a specific area. For example, let's say you're living in a residence where you're also going to tie in outpatient services. If you're in a certain type of treatment residence but there are outpatient services on the mental health side that you need, this you can utilize this to identify nearby services so that you can get all of your services in the immediate area uh, so that it's most efficient but also being able to do this and connect immediately in your own community allows you to remain tied to your community, which gives you a better opportunity of, of full engagement. Children's program, children's hospital. Uh-oh. Now, the other thing that it has the ability to do, because it's, as Marguerite explained, this is based on geomapping and everything has been geocoded. Um, why don't we just search for? Yes, okay. By yep, by clicking, by clicking the button on the right hand side, you can set your own location. So you can pick the address that you are at in an effort to identify the services around you. Search location. Each icon represents either a program or a service. Like I said, really bad ventriloquism. Yes. 
So by clicking on the icon, you go back to the directory of, of information for that particular program or service. And, and by the way, we're just we're showing you an area that is uh, less congested with services because if we were to click on Yonkers, for example, you would just see this huge array of different shapes and colors because that is a very service-rich in, in area, um, which is really great for the people who live there. But for demonstration purposes, it would just look like a big art project. Yes. So you can you can pick the miles from your location and utilize that to identify services both near and far. And if you don't want to click on the icon, you can also get that information yeah. And by going back and, and clicking specifically on on the target, you can get the the same directory of information. I'll open it up for questions. Okay. So stay, sit tight. Yep. And we may need Marguerite, uh, depending on the question, to stay close. Um, this also provides the opportunity to deal with changes that happen in, in the delivery of service. Uh, any information that uh, adds or, or changes can be, can be uh, changed in real time. I also assume we have the capacity to create links from the information so you will be able to, if not today, click on and get more information uh, on a particular service. And that's helpful to the organizations themselves who, who really want to, you know, present what it is they can do more than just a list and a name. So hopefully this is a good step forward. Uh, we're joined today by the head of our Office for Women, Robbie Schlaff. She whispered to me, we want the same thing for our department. No, I whisper a Sure, we'll do it. <laughs> That's the way to lobby the county executive. But uh, I want to, I, I, because I know time is precious and these folks have other th stories they have to cover. So I want to open it up uh, to anybody, questions, Rebecca, anybody else? Joe, uh, to answer them as necessary. Rebecca? Sure. Um, how many people are using the mental health services throughout Westchester? Are you in a position to estimate? Yeah. You have, to, you have to kind of keep in mind in that question that there's really two systems of care. There's a public system and there's a private system. Private system are people using private insurance to go to their own therapist, to go to whatever services they're going to. For us, that's a really hard estimate. But I do know on the, on the public side, we're looking at people utilizing public services. In this county, the numbers are in the thousands because it's not just mental health services that we're talking about. If you keep in mind, Department of Community Mental Health oversees all three mental hygiene agencies, Office for People with Developmental Disability Services in the county, alcohol and substance use issues, and mental health. So it's thousands and thousands of people in the county utilizing. Yeah, we'll, we'll dig out some hard numbers. Uh, Catherine Chaffee yep. hopefully will be able to help us yeah. get, get a number for you. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yep. And privacy, I guess it wouldn't be an issue really with privacy because no one who's going on and putting their their home address or where they live wouldn't yeah. that, that's not by linking to by linking to it you're not adding any of your own personal information to the system so there's no HIPAA or other privacy issues involved. Well, I'm, I'm going to answer it from a system side, but then I do want Charlotte to speak to that as well. From a system side, the goal in treatment for individuals who have any of these needs, the number one goal is engagement, to help people connect to and engage in services. So the more we can help people locate the services they need, identify the providers that can assist them, the more we can do, and I'll, I'll let Charlotte talk to this from the, the care management side, but from our perspective, we know that anything that we can do to help people connect and engage increases their likelihood of success and recovery. And let me just, Rebecca, add to that. I, th I think the, the point I made earlier about families, many times it's the distraught parent or the sibling that, that does the search. 
because they see somebody in some pain in their family, and that individual may or may not be completely, you know, conscious of what, what they're going through, what they're dealing with, but it's the loved one that has an easier tool by which they can get that person help. There's still a major stigma that's attached to mental health issues, and it shouldn't exist. If, if I break my arm, there's no stigma attached to my having broken my arm. I might have you know, made a foolish action or something, but, but there's no moral negative that should be attached to that. There shouldn't be a moral negative attached to mental health either. So to make it easier for people to find you know, what that information is is, is more helpful. And we can, you know, this is a beginning of a platform that can expand and do more and do better as we go forward. But I think Charlotte will be able to, and, and as I always do, yeah, anybody uh, in the media, you're welcome to do one-on-one -on -one interviews with anybody who's here. And I think that I'm sure Charlotte would be happy to talk about that probably more passionately one-on-one -on -one than in the group setting. So any, any other group questions that anybody has from the media? This yes. Is officially up and running like today for people to use? Yep. We can get onto it right now. And, uh, yep and go from there. And it's, it will be upgraded, uh, upgraded, updated information uh, as we go along. So if we get a, uh, you know, I noticed one of the entries said 10th Avenue in Mount Vernon. I happen to know that there's a North 10th Avenue and a South 10th Avenue. It's got to be one of the two. So somewhere later today, we're going to figure out whether it's North 10th or South 10th and put the right number in. And, and we can do that instantaneously, which we couldn't do with a fixed copy book. That's great. Do we have any of those books laying around? Do we? Okay. We'll make sure our friends from News 12 can get it if they want it. For a while, we treated them like gold because there were only a, we haven't updated since 2016, so we didn't run any more publications. So there's literally a handful of them left around. Okay. It's not a phase. We phased into yeah. we had an online version that was a PDF searchable version, and then we graduated to this. So we've been phasing out the books over the past few years. Uh, if there are no other questions, we'll thank you for your time and attention, and we'll invite our friends in the press to interview any individuals they would like to. Thank you for being with us this morning. Have a good day.